almost 90 years, die-cast cars have been one of the most popular and well-known pieces of the automotive fandom. Similar to what action figures are to superheroes, die-cast cars have always been a way for enthusiasts to collect their favorite cars in the automotive world, but on a much smaller scale. My name is Jared with the Collect Car Network. That's AutoHunter.com, ClassicCars.com, and of course, The Journal. Today, we're gonna to be discussing scaling and the different sizes of die-cast cars. But before we kick off today's video, let's hear a quick word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Land Air C. Keep tabs on all your valuable assets from the palm of your hand. Remember, with Land Air C, theft is temporary. Visit LandAirC.com to order your Land Air C GPS unit for your classic vehicle. When it comes to collecting die-cast cars, there are several different brands and scalings that you can choose from. Today, we have two cars with us from Greenlight Collectibles, one in a 24 scale size and the other in a 164 scale size. If you notice, both these cars are the exact same model. The reason why this is significant is because many companies don't produce the same model in different scales. Personally, I like this feature from Greenlight because I was able to collect my favorite model in different scaling for my collection. It was just something that I had to have. Taking a look at some of the features between the large scale models and the smaller scale models, you can really start to see a difference simply due to the fact that there's just more room to work with on the larger scale models. For example, when taking a look at the larger scale model that we have here, we can see that it has added features that we might not find on a bunch of these smaller scale cars. Those features include moving doors, rubber wheels, plastic headlights, and added mirrors. A lot of these features you won't come across on the cheaper 164 models or even on some of the premium models. For example, there are different levels to each of the 164 models that change major features of the car, such as utilizing plastic in more areas than normal, or leaving out details such as an opening hood or an independent spoiler that gets added to the car after being painted. Now, let's take a look at the cars and do a breakdown of the different sizes and compare them to something that might be a little bit easier to picture. For starters, 164 scale die cast cars are three inches in length and about one inch in width. How does that stack up to a 124 scale model? Well, with your standard 124 scale car, you're looking at an increase in length by about five inches and an increase in width by about two inches, coming to a total of roughly eight inches long and three inches wide. Now, the third most common size for collectors is the 118 scale with a total length of about nine and a half inches and a width of four inches. And of course, with an increase in size, you will have an increase in weight, which is just another thing to take into consideration when choosing your next die cast model. But if you ever want to go down to a super small and detailed size model, there's the adorable 187 scale option that will definitely save on space and weight, but maybe not the cost. Now, when it comes to collecting large scale models such as the 118 scale or even a 150 scale model, one of the biggest things that you have to pay attention to is the size and the different displays that you are able to find for these models. Personally, I prefer to collect the 164 scale model because there are different storage displays that I can find for this model that I can either use to hang up on a wall or find on a shelf or um, you know a coffee table, something like that. It's a little bit easier for these models to fit there where when it comes to you know the 118 or even the 124 scale, that's a lot of room to have up on the wall and it can make it very, very difficult for you to find the right piece of furniture or wall hanging to support these models. The best thing that I can suggest to someone who's just starting out or even someone who has been collecting for a long time is to try your best to branch out and check out different size models. Now, I know everyone might not have the budget to buy a model from each of the different scales, but I think you should definitely try to see if you can get some from the different sizes just to see which one you personally enjoy more. You may find that you enjoy spending more money on one large scale model opposed to several smaller ones due to the detail or the pricing of the model. At the end of the day, it all comes down to preference, but you never know until you try. I 
I wanna thank you all for tuning in to the very first episode of Collectible Corner. Although it was a little bit rough for me, I'm hoping to get better in future episodes. Uh, drop a comment down below on which size model you collect and uh, make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. See you guys in the next one.